Hello everybody, this is Ryan over at High Carb Regenerator. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about metabolic damage. I get a lot of questions about metabolic damage. And somebody, actually one of my viewers, sent me the best video I've ever seen on metabolic damage ever. So, I'm actually going to jump into the uh, computer pretty soon here. We're going to go over that video. If the person who is in charge of that video sees it and wants me to take it down let me know don't copy strike me anyway i just i can't believe it's just such a gem but a lot of people don't believe metabolic damage exists and the books that talk about the books that did the studies the books that you know have all the information are extremely hard to get and expensive i'm going to hop over into the computer we're going to watch this i'm not going to watch the whole thing but i will link it down below that way you can go watch the whole thing yourself. I didn't actually even watch the whole thing myself because the information in the first, I don't know, like 15 minutes is just so, so amazing. All right, here we are in the computer. Hopefully this video does you some good. If it does, give it a like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. But let's get started here. Actually, I don't know who these people are, so I have no idea. Uh, I guess they own a farm or something. Great. Hi, Georgie. Thank you so much for coming back on the channel. I think a lot of people enjoyed the first interview. So if you guys have not yet, make sure you check out part one where we review, where Georgie reviews the criticisms on cholesterol and sugar. And the reason that we group those two together is because I feel like cholesterol and sugar are demonized in the same way where like Georgie brought up in the part one, it's like the fireman is caught at the fire, but is it actually the fireman who caused the fire? So right. guys tune into part one and in part. Um, I will review that. And if I find it of any uh, value, um, then I'll probably do one of these here too as well two we're going to review even more criticisms because you guys brought up so many um and we're going to start back with sugar again if that's okay um so georgie and like i said i'm going to link this down below what is your thought on the criticism that sugar is just empty calories it's devoid of i'm actually going to reach out to this guy um i'll figure that out and then i i hope they get him on here vitamins and minerals and we don't need more empty calories as an obese nation. Um, well, I mean, so is fat, right? If you're eating pure fat, it's also empty calories, unless you're eating it some kind of an animal fat that's got like rem remnants from whatever the animal was eating. I mean, if you're go gorging up on pure coconut oil or pure olive oil, it's also empty calories. Um, however, uh, sugar gets metabolized differently and produces more carbon dioxide per unit than fat does. Um, and maybe that's a discussion for a separate topic, but it's usually the, the levels of carbon dioxide that determine the level of mitochondrial biogenesis inside the organism. That's the cardinal, the cardinal regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis is basically are the levels of carbon dioxide, which is one, one reason when people go up in the mountain, they spend some time there, let's say like uh, two weeks or even more, um, and then, then they go back down when they test them, they test their tissues, both the number and the density of the mitochondria has increased dramatically, usually four or five times, which is one of the reasons why now elite athletes train at altitude for months before like a very important event, because when they go, when they go back to lower altitude, which, where usually the, the, the event um, is happening, for the, for the next few weeks, they actually are dramatically outperforming their peers who have been training at altitude, all, all other things. That's crazy. That's absolutely not. It's being equal. So if you want more mitochondria, then basically sugar is your friend. Uh, fats are also not bad, but usually the ones that promote mitochondrial biogenesis are the uh, short to medium chain fatty acids found in coconut oil. They actually get metabolized pretty similar to sugar. They don't require special transport like the longer chain fats, um, which depend on the... I still don't recommend fat. I mean, I, honestly, I, I don't know why he's saying that a little bit because whenever I've added fat into my diet, my performance just always goes down acid l-carnitine to get shuttled into the mitochondria and processed so in terms of empty calories sure i wouldn't overdo sugar unless you're also eating the cofactors that are needed to process it right um but as, as that study that uh, i think i sent it over to you showed that if you're feeding rats 
uh, like their normal chow, and then you let, you allow them access uh, ad libitum, which is freely, to additional liquid uh, in the form of Coke, Coca Cola. Uh, they were they were uh, basically in, engulfing. Uh, in, I mean, they were they were gulping uh, the equivalent of about eight additional cokes per day for 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 an adult, and they actually started. They actually were losing weight. So so the whole argument. So, so there goes your sugar ar- argument, but the, the, we do get into um, uh, metabolic damage at some point here. I should have written the time down, fast forward. And as you know, Coke is, is empty calories, it's what, right? It's sugar, it's caffeine, um, and caramel color, and, and a little bit of phosphoric acid, and that's about it. It doesn't have any vitamins, minerals, and whatnot uh, like Red Bull, say, it does. Uh, but for whatever reason, those empty calories actually increase the metabolic rate of the animals. And the ones that were eating the regular chow plus the the equivalent of eight cokes per day weigh less than the ones who are eating just the regular chow. So, so I mean, it's hard to explain this uh, this paradox um, unless you're willing to give sugar the credit that it's increasing the metabolic rate even when it's not, um, you know, entirely um, uh, sc- even when, even when your nutrient intake is not entirely scaled up to meet the extra um, you know calories coming from sugar. Now, if you're only drinking coke. You're probably going to run into some vitamin deficiencies, specifically vitamin B1 and B3. Of course, I'm not ever. I don't think anybody's ever recommending that you just straight up eat sugar, because those are cofactors required to metabolize the. Sugar. And when Walter Kempner had people on the rice diet and he had them on um, more more sugar, he actually had them on some kind of a vitamin tab. I don't I don't know what was in it. it just said vitamin uh, uh, tablet. Sugar, but the same thing is true uh, if you're eating only only pure fat. Like if you're only eating coconut oil and nothing else for a few days, um, you will run out of vitamin B2, uh, riboflavin, because it's required for the for the beta oxidation process, uh, and you will probably also run out of uh, you know um, uh, NAD, which is synthesized from niacin or niacinamide, which is vitamin B3. Um, so if you're eating only empty calories, sure you will you will, you'll probably lead to some sort of depletion. But if you're eating a well balanced diet and adding extra uh, calories on top in the form of pure sugar. I don't think you'll be causing um, a problem. In fact, you'll be increasing the metabolic rate. Several studies. Um, I just got in. A, a, I won't call it an argument. Talk about this with some dude on on um, Instagram yesterday, and I'm like, he, he's one of these coaches that's got everybody on seco. You know, calories in, calories out. And I'm like, dude, you're tanking everybody's uh, everybody's thyroid. And then, of course, they're coming back to you because they can't lose the weight. And they're like, and he's like, oh, that's uh, un- unsubstantial or something. I'm like, dude, no. That study in rats was actually, um, there's, there's several citations inside of it discussing older human studies where adding up to a pound of sugar per day, pure sugar, nothing else. I guess they were just mixing it with drinks. Um, it actually led to improvement in glycemic control in people with type 1 diabetes. So these people don't even produce any insulin. So actually improve their glycemic control, allow them to reduce the amount of insulin they were using, uh, which is pretty striking. I mean, like for, for diabetes type 2 also had beneficial effect. Um, actually, it reduced the, the, the level of fatty infiltration of their liver. Most people with type 2 diabetes have fatty liver disease as well. Um, and then now that study showed that basically like the study with the rats uh, confirmed that it, oh, the same thing happens in animals. And recently there was a human study demonstrating that adding a pound of sugar per day uh, resulted in a drastic in- improvement of fertility in males. Now, I can a hundred percent agree. The libido, <laughs> oh, it goes up the more sugar you got in your uh, system. Why do I mention this? Because fertility in both males and females is actually one of the cardinal biomarkers of good health. It's considered an evolutionary luxury. Like if you're starving fighting off a predator or basically the environment is really not very beneficial. Um, it's known that in both males and females, fertility drastically declines. In fact, very active female athletes have a now medical condition called the female athlete triad, one of the one of the core signs of which, one of the diagnostic criteria of which is infertility. They can have children. And many former female athletes, when they end their athletic career, struggle for years. Some of them actually can have children. They've damaged their ovaries and the whole energetic system supporting the ovaries to the point where they cannot have children. Why wouldn't they have enough sugar if they're in athletic uh, pursuits like that? I just, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Um, so if adding a pound of extra pure white sugar without any cofactors drastically improve the fertility of males, it's very hard to argue that this is a bad 
uh, like it's a, it, that sugar is somehow doing everything else wrong, but somehow selectively improving fertility. It just doesn't work that way. Fertility is a downstream effect of high metabolism, good health, and supportive environment. How's your body to use the energetic resources that normally would deal with inflammation uh, to focus on other things, to and, and which allows it to better maintain its health? Uh, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people are afraid of sugar because say it's going to make me gain weight. It, it, it is a fairly often observed fact that people who have stressed themselves chronically and then they switch to a sh uh, like a higher sugar diet, they may initially put on weight. Uh, however, there you go. Recent studies have, have uh, discovered that this is not due to the sugar. It's due to the fact that chronically restricting sugar uh, upregulates the enzyme that produces cortisol. And cortisol is known now as the primary uh, driver of especially the, the, the mid-body obesity, the visceral fat. And uh, there's now human studies with cortisol blockers showing that it can actually cure uh, diabetes type 2 and lead to sustained weight loss without any caloric reduction, change in exercise habits, or change in the macronutrients. In fact, uh, this study showed that basically just by blocking cortisol, you can continue to eat the same junk food that you always did, and you will actually lose the weight, which speaks very strongly to the fact that, uh, to the hypothesis, supports the hypothesis that weight gain is an endocrine problem. It's not a lack of exercise, or it's not necessarily simply, you know, packing on more calories. I mean, I know people who have been stressing themselves for years, and when they stopped because their metabolic rate was so low due to the fasting and chronic over-exercising, that they started gaining weight on a 1,000 calorie diet as soon as they stopped the low carbing. So it's not the carbs. I mean, you can't, so ideally what, what should be happening is like, so if you're on a 1,000 on a, on a calorie diet. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave a link down below. Watch it at your own you know, leisure. I mean, it's not something that you gotta watch. You can kind of just listen to it or go for a walk or ride or whatever, whatever you wanna do. That's all I'm gonna play of this. Um, it's really interesting. I'm not really into the whole organ meats or whatever they were talking about, but that is what metabolic damage is. That's what them books talk about, but those books are extremely hard to come by. Um, maybe I'll get lucky enough one day and, and, and find one. Anyways, uh, that is it of this portion. All right, well, hopefully that helped you out. If uh, anybody that you know is talking, you know, doesn't believe in metabolic damage or you know, sugar makes you fat or, or whatever it is, uh, send them, share this video with them. Let them see that uh, it's just, I can't believe how many people out there think that sugar makes you fat of all things. You know, it's, it's crazy. I do this DoorDash thing and um, <laughs> I'll go to the store and I'll get like Doritos, potato chips, ruffles, uh, you know, dips, uh, hell of a good, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, this stuff is just so disgusting. And then I'll get a Diet Coke. I'm like, what in the hell are you think? You think there's a Ruffles as, as health food? I mean, it's got potatoes in it. So I guess it's health food. It's fried. That's not, that's not going to make you fat. But the sugar in the Coke, now that wasn't going to put you over. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, that's my video. Hope you liked it. Like, subscribe. Talk to you next time.